How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Let's Build Twitter. I have no clue what episode we're on, but we're just going to go for it for now. Last episode, we went ahead and made it so that we can take a user from Postman or some from some other front end, send it over to the back end and actually store it. So the thing about Twitter is that this is not actually how the registration works. Twitter has actually one of the most complicated applications or registration processes I've actually seen in a website. So the first thing I kind of want to do is just sit down and walk through the registration step that Twitter actually has. And then we're going to hop into the code after that and take a look at how we're actually going to implement that. So the first thing that you're going to see whenever we go into the Twitter registration form is a create your account screen. This is where you actually put your name, email, and date of birth. You can also put in your phone number, but for, for ease of usability and, and simplicity, we are just going to use email here. Something to note is that we are going to split the name and the first name and last name. That way we can normalize that table a little bit. And then from here, whenever you go to the next step, it's actually going to go to a tracking consent page. Uh, this is not actually going to do anything on our application because all it's doing is just saying, hey, can we use your data to kind of quote unquote personalize your experience, aka we're going to track what you do. That way we can try to inject ourselves as, as many places as possible. Again, this is not going to send a request. Maybe there's some flag or something that we could do. But again, we're not going to be tracking any user, so we're not going to send a request here. The next phase of the application is actually verifying the information. So in the front end, what this is end up going Going to be is just some non-editable fields with your username user information inside of it to just kind of say hey this is what we're going to be putting into the back end this is what we're going to be storing if you want to change this information you have to go back to the first page change it and come back to the create your account this will actually be the first request this is what we're going to work on today or in this episode and here this is when the user is actually created with the very basic information so it'll be first name last name email and birth date and then we'll kind of add in the other information as we get going the next step in the verification is to add your phone Typically on Twitter, they ask you to verify your phone. We're going to skip that. We're not going to pay for an API or anything. We're just going to have to put in their phone number. It's fine. So this is going to be our second request to the back end. And this is just going to update the, the phone column on that user's record in the database. Again, not verifying it. We're just going to leave it as is. The next step is to verify the email. This is going to be the most complicated step. And this is actually going to be sending two requests. Whenever you log in or whenever you get to the screen, it's going to automatically send you an email with a verification code. This is also going to store the verification code in the user's row on the database. That way we can check for it. And then whenever you click on the next button, it's going to send the code that you put inside of the text box over to the back end to verify. And then if it didn't work, we'll figure all that stuff out there. But this is essentially going to send two requests. The first request to create a verification code, put it on your back end, and then it will send it to you through email. Then after that, we'll send a request to send the code over and kind of check it. Finally, we have the last one, which is to set your password. After you do the set password essentially what it'll do is it'll take you to the home page what we'll do there is so again what we'll do is just send one request it'll send the password in the person's username and it'll end up changing the password column on that user's row so with that being said let's go ahead and actually hop in to the application on eclipse and start coding now that we are inside of eclipse last episode like i said we went ahead and made it so we can send data from postman or from our front end client into the back end however we don't actually need all of the information from the user we only need the first name, last name, email, and date of birth. So we're going to first go ahead and create a new model that we can send only that information. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new class inside model. I'm going to call this a registration object. And inside this registration object, we're just going to have a private string first name, a private string last name, a private string email and a private um, date DOB, I think. I think we want to go data birth there, DOB. Then we will go ahead and say SQL. And then we'll go ahead and right click and do all the things that we need. So I'm going to source and create our constructors. We'll do a no args first. We'll do an all args constructor. We'll do a getters and setters that we need, which is all of them. So go ahead and select everything. Then finally, we'll do a two string. So go ahead, source, and generate two string. 
and we're good to go. So now essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and refactor our authentication controller and our service to go ahead and accept this instead of accepting a user object. Inside of our authentication controller, this is gonna be pretty simple. Instead of taking an application user, we're going to take in a registration object like so. And we need to go ahead and import registration object. And I'm gonna call this RO. And inside of our user service, we're gonna pass in RO. Now, of course, this is gonna cause an issue because right now our user service doesn't actually take in an RO, it actually takes in a user. So we need to go back into our application user service and we need to update this to take in a registration object. So we'll say registration object RO. And now we need to make some changes to our application. So first I'm gonna say application user equals new application user. So now this is what I was saying that would probably be a little bit useful to have, and we might wanna call this user. This is when I'd say that having a builder might come in handy, but I think it's okay for now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and set all of the fields that we need. So we need to set the first name to ro.get first name. We need to set the last name, so user.set last name to ro.get last name. We need to set the email, user.set email to ro.get email. And then finally, say user.set date of birth equal to ro.get dob. Instead of having to send all the information of the user, all we really have to do is just pass in these pieces of information. So now at this point, we should essentially be ready to change the Postman request. So let's go ahead and update that. In Postman, we don't need a user ID. We don't, we need first name, last name, email. We do not need phone. We do not need username, password, or authorities. So now we essentially got rid of a whole bunch of stuff that we didn't even need. If we go ahead and I believe everything should be cleared up, we should be able to send this request and pass in the user. So go ahead and send the request. You see, we get a user back. Phone is null because we didn't set anything. Date of birth did not work because this needs to be DOB now. And save it again. Now if we send it, we get an internal server error because the user already exists. So let's go ahead and restart the application so that we can clear that out. Now, if we send it once again, you see that we get the date of birth correct, the username's null, and user is good to go. That is essentially all we need for the first registration step, but there is still one more thing that we can go ahead and do for our registration flow, and that is to go into here again. And the first thing that I know that Twitter does is it generates a new username or a random username whenever you sign up. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a private method inside of our user service. So private string generate username. And this is going to generate a username for us based off of the person's name. So we're gonna pass in the name here. What we're going to do is we're gonna say long generated number is equal to long, and then we're going to use math.floor, and then math.random. Why did it say floor div? We just want math.floor, and then math.random. And then we're going to times that by a very large number to get a nine digit number. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So this is going to create a nine digit number. And did I spell random wrong or something? Math.random, this should be lowercase, there we go. And what we're going to do is just gonna return name plus generated number. Because whenever Twitter creates your account, they just create a username with your name plus nine random digits. So now what we can go ahead and do is first we will say string username or a string name is equal to for user dot get first name plus user dot get last name. So we'll go ahead and concatenate these two names together like so. And then what we need to do is essentially loop through and try to um, find a username that's not already taken. So we're going to say boolean name taken is equal to true to start out. And we're also going to say string temp 
name is equal to an empty string to start. And then we will go ahead and say while name taken. We'll say temporary name is equal to generate name with actually should be username generate username with the user's name so that is going to generate uh yeah i need to do this this is going to generate a, a username with the user's first name last name and nine random digits and then we're simply just going to check to see if that name is already taken so we're going to say find by username and then temp name dot is empty. So if it's empty, we're going to say name taken equal to false. Otherwise, it's fine. So the odds of this happening are very, very slim, but it's a good thing to try it just to be safe. So now we have our random username and we can go ahead and say user dot set username. And then this will be equal to the temp name. So now our user has a username. We are going to keep the roles the same and we're going to do one last thing. We're going to say try return user repo dot save user. And if we catch an SQL error, it's going to mean that the one of the unique props got violated essentially. So I'm going to say exception E since the SQL exception or PostgreSQL PSQL exception is a runtime. We can't really catch it, but if we do catch it, typically that's going to mean that the email was already taken. So we're going to throw a new exception email already taken exception. So this is going to help us prevent people from taking the same email and we are going to have to create this. So I'm going to click create class. And this is going to go in the exceptions folder package. So now this is going to extend runtime exception. That way it doesn't, it's not hat. It's going to extend runtime exception. That way it doesn't have to be caught. We're going to add that. So it stops crying. We're just going to make a quick constructor. So public email already taken. Exception. It's just going to call super the message saying the email provided is already taken. So the email should be unique so we can't pass in multiple emails. So now at this point, we should be able to go ahead and send a request. There's just one last thing that I would like to do, and that is to handle the exception if it actually occurs whenever the user sends in that, that email. Inside the authentication controller, over top of our post mapping, we're going to use something called exception handling or exception handler. So essentially what's going to happen is spring whenever it sees a email already taken exception, it's going to call this handler, which is going to return a response entity. This is going to hold a string and we're just going to call this handle email taken. So what's going to happen is if a user sends us an email that's already taken, a um, email already taken exception is going to be thrown. Whenever that exception gets thrown, Spring is going to send a response for us automatically. We're going to return a new response entity of type string, and it's going to say the email you provided is already in use. And we are going to put this as an HTTP status dot conflict. So now a user will no longer be able to send us the same password or same email. So let's go ahead and test it out. So now if we go ahead and register with our account, you can see we have our user ID, our first and last name, our email, our phone is still no because we haven't done that yet, our date of birth, and we have a random username. And if we try to send this again, You'll see the email you provided is already in use. So that gets us all the way through the first step of doing the registration process. I hope you guys all enjoyed 
As always, leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. I will be taking feedback and construction criticism and all that good stuff. Also, hit the bell icon so you know when each one of these episodes go live. Next time around, we're going to try to get through to the email part, and we'll see how far we get there. But anyway, I appreciate you all. Have a great day. Peace out, and I'll see you guys in the next video.